Welcome back to another edition of the Purple Rain Podcast. Welcome back to episode 233 of the Purple Rain Podcast. The Devonta Freeman, the Melvin Gordon, the Will Hill, the Priest Holmes, the LeBron McLean, the Bam Morris, Christian Thompson. Mm. I guess I guess the Matt Elon on episode of the Purple Rain Podcast. Thank you all for coming through this episode of the Purple Rain Podcast. First and foremost, I am sorry about the intro. I would take full responsibility. Uh, it's not done yet. It's been busy, and I I realized that you know the Ravens have lost a lot of players. Another one just departed yesterday. Um, so it, it's hard to you know find you know find some good clips of who we have because we've lost damn near whole half a team. But don't worry about that. It'll be here. But you can follow us on Instagram at the Purple Rain Podcast. Follow this guy on Instagram on X. At Sutton Def. You can follow me on Instagram at simply as 10 and X at simply as 10. Most importantly, our sponsor, Manscaped. If you want to go in there, get yourself something nice, treat yourself, get a gift for a friend, use code PRP. 20% off your whole entire order and free international shipping. You know, we try to hook you up. So hope you go and use that. But it's been a bit of a while since we talked. I got some questions to ask you, Sutton. Saw you, you know. Had a good weekend. You were at the DC United game. I got to ask you about that. DM Joe about it. How was your weekend and how was the DC United game? You saw Christian Bentek, a scorer, who, by the way, pretty damn good striker in the Premier League in England. So I'm just going to hand it off to you. Well, well, actually, Alex, I did not go see DC United play. It was actually the Washington Spirit who I went to go see play. So it was, oh. it was a women's soccer game. Yeah. And okay. it was actually very entertaining. They played uh, uh, Bay FC, which I mean, it, it was it was a pretty tight, okay. pretty tight game to be honest with you. Uh, but at the very end of the match, uh, Washington they scored a goal and they ended up going up two one and taking the W. So that was cool. It was actually the fun fact. It was actually okay. my first uh, football game, like you know, football game that I've ever been to. Like you know, other than outside of college, that's my first time going yeah. to like a professional level game. So it was a lot of fun. You know, the energy in the stadium was, was, you know, it was, it was electric, especially when like, you know, you know, that feeling when you're watching a, a good soccer game and like the team that you're rooting for is, is, is finally getting close to the goal, right? It gets into the strikers, um, you know, I don't want to say hands because it's not how it goes, but the, the striker gets the ball, right? And they're getting close to the goal that everybody kind of gets on the edge of their seat. That's how I was the entire time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to um, the Washington Spirit. They played at uh, Audi Field. Good time. I had a great time. So I definitely want to get back. Maybe me and you could hit up a, a you know a soccer game at some point, uh, maybe this summer or something like that. There, you know, their prices aren't bad. And you know, speaking of games, got to hit up these guys. One and zero today. Oh um, yeah, Orioles as well. Baseball season started today. One eleven to three. Eleven, uh, I believe it was eleven three eleven to two. Um, I I don't Ooh. know how I remember. I just watched it, uh, but. You know, we've got other sports starting, but we're here to talk Ravens, obviously. Had to get out of the way. But yeah, I mean, love me a good soccer game. Audi Field. I uh, was there this summer. Nice field. Nice little little soccer field. Nice little field. It's just different to a, a football game, you know, just the way it's 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 constructed and just get to enjoy yourself. Uh, but thank you all for coming through to this episode. Everybody's coming in. We got the mods in the chat. Goodness gracious. I oh, see yeah. Boz, I see Roosh, I see Tanja, I see Cal, I see K Dog. I guess we're here to talk some Ravens football. Um, yeah, a lot of things have happened since we, we've last talked. Uh, so I guess we'll start it off. Why not? Genevion Clowney, who we signed last year in August, I believe, for like a vet minimum contract. Um, honestly, it was after our first preseason game. He was still out there, still unsigned. Eric DaCosta goes out, signed Genevion Clowney on a vet min deal. Tons of incentives. Clowney hits all of them, sack-wise. 
signs a two-year $20 million deal up to $24 million with yeah. the Carolina Panthers. This Ravens team in 2023 has earned a lot of guys a lot of money. Uh, he, he goes back home, went to college in South Carolina, back near the fan 30 minutes away. Just, I guess, your initial reaction, initial thoughts. Did you think he was going to come back? How do you feel? No, I, I knew that Jadavian Clowney was going to be one of those um, kind of like cap casualties. We weren't going to be able to keep him, especially with the way that he played last season. Again, like you said, to your point, the Ravens have a track record of bringing in guys who the rest of the league sees as old and washed up and kind of turning the clocks back on them a little bit. And they end up having a really, really good bounce back, uh, revitalizing season. Like it's, it's really cool to watch. I mean, I love that these players are doing that for us. And I think it really speaks to our coaching staff, to be honest with you. Um, I know that we've had our gripes with John Harbaugh in the past, but I think all around, you know, as as a collective, that coaching staff has, has done some really great things, and especially bringing in some older players and making sure that they can still see some good production. But, you know, I, I like, again, I didn't expect Jadavian Clowney to come back because of how he did perform. And I think he deserves this payday, to be honest with you, in the, in the back half of his career. Um, had a good year last year. Obviously, what do you have, like 10 sacks? Would you say 10 sacks? Nine and a half, ten, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's like nine and a half or ten, one of two, right there, exactly. So, uh, shout out to Jadavian Clowney. Um, and, and like you said, again, he's close to home. He was saying, I was reading the article about him uh, going to the Panthers, and you know, he was upset because he was so far away from his family. And like you said, he's in Carolina again, so he, he gets to be close to them and he gets a boatload of money. So, shout out to Jadavian Clowney. It is unfortunate that we were not able to capitalize on his um. A1 production last season with a Super Bowl ring. We weren't able to send them off with a ring. That's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. It's a business. But it does leave a void, right? It does leave a hole on that edge rushing group. And that's what I wanted to talk about today, especially with you, Alex. I want to know how you're feeling overall about the edge rusher room in general. So, you know, we've got Adafi Owe, right, and David Ajabu, who are kind of going to be leading the charge of that position. Are we comfortable? with those two kind of taking the reins and being at the forefront of our edge rushing group. This is the same exact conversation we had last year all throughout the summer. We had it up until the first preseason game. We signed Clowney after that preseason game. And then we signed Van Noy week four or week three. It's the same exact thing. No, I don't. I don't trust it because we had to bring in two veterans last year who both got more sacks than Ojabo and Owe combined. Both of them, Clowney and Van Oy. Uh, and and honestly, if I think this team, you know, wants to have that type of level of sacks again, you're gonna have to resign Van Oy. Maybe call up Howie Roseman. What you want for Hassan Reddick? We don't have the cap for that, unfortunately. But if you want to have that type of production, uh, that's what you would have to go out and do. I mean, I've seen the guys who are available now. You need Kangakwe. I don't think he'll come back here. Didn't really have a good stint with us. I know it was uh, Wink, his defense, but I just don't think he'll come back here. Um, I know Emmanuel Agba is out there. Um, obviously, we're in, about to be in April now, so phase one and two of free agency is over. But EDC makes his money here. Uh, he'll find the right guys, but I can bank on Owe getting at least six and a half to seven sacks like he did last year. It's just Ojabo. We can't keep talking about potential. It's year three. It, it's year freaking three. Uh, the same year as Hamilton. Same year as Linderbaum. And what have they done? You know, look at even likely. What has he done? He's become That's one of Lamar's point. favorite targets, I think. Um, so until, you know, he shows it, I mean, because the talent's there, but until he can consistently stay healthy, I, I can't put trust in him. So we have to get at least one or two more edge rushers. I maybe even draft one for me to feel comfortable with that position. No, I mean, I, I agree with you there. I mean, I, I can't confidently put my faith and my trust into an Ojabo and an Owe. And uh, I know you're saying that like Owe might be the better of the two, the better option, right? He might put up more numbers, but I don't even know about that, bro. I really don't because like we, we've known Owe to be this guy who, you know, he can set an edge. He's hella athletic, right? He can get after your quarterback, but, hasn't really translated into sacks. And I, I know I've, I'm kind of beating a dead horse with this. I've been talking about this for, for probably months, up to almost two years on this podcast now. 
but the pressures really aren't going to do it, bro. They're, they're just not at the end of the day. If you cannot end the down and send them into the next down with a, a tackle for a loss or, yeah. you know, a sack, something like that, it's just – it's not going to – it's not going to bode well for our defense in the long run. I and mean, you got to get these guys on the ground again. That's the difference between Nadafe Owe and a TJ Watt or a Miles Garrett. Again, all guys in our division, by the way. Um, we're going to need to go out and get that veteran presence. And I think oh, – not Ojabo, but uh, let me see – Yolanda says it here, uh, no veteran presence at edge. We need to address this. Who are the free agent pass rushers out there right now? Uh, I can pull that up real quick for you. Yeah, yeah, if you could, because I, I want to know. I think I saw a list the other day, but I can't remember exactly all of who was on it. But Okay, yeah, I got you right now. Okay. Emmanuel Ugba, Carl Lawson, Randy Gregory, Unique Ngakwe, uh, Calais Campbell. I mean, he's more of a. They have him listed as an end. Um, <laughs> Tyus Bowser, uh, Jerry Hughes, Dwayne Smoot, Bud Dupree, um, Rasheem Green, Shaq Lawson. Uh, and that's really nobody else really sticking out to me on, on this list. And then Bruce Irvin, Justin Houston, if you're into that. Uh, yeah. If you're Dickens. into that, I love it. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. There really aren't a whole lot of options there. I mean, I think that, you know, there's certain guys like Lawson, um, all, but I mean, some of those guys, I think you could bring in and they could benefit from being plugged into a Ravens defensive system. Uh, now I know we don't have Mike McDonald anymore and it's going to be Zach or back there uh, calling the plays, but again, I just talked about our coaching staff and how good it's been in taking some of these older, more veteran presence players and, and turning them into, a solid piece, rotational piece for at least one season, one to two seasons. So I have faith that EDC, Eric DaCosta, that is general manager of the Ravens, for those of you guys who don't know, can work out a deal with one of those guys for a good price. For That's the main thing, a good, fair price. We don't want to overpay for anybody. And I think we've been doing a pretty good job at that in the last few seasons, like getting a good deal on these guys and they way outperform their deals. And that's why they end up going somewhere else. But, it, you know, it's going to have to be addressed in free agency with a veteran presence. No matter what we do in the draft, I'm still not going to feel comfortable because I know we're not drafting edge rusher first, probably not even in the second round either. Right. We're probably not going to go for an edge rusher until third round or beyond. So with that being said, I think we do still need to get that veteran presence. One of those guys is going to have to be a Baltimore Raven. I'm just going to say that. Now, how do you feel about Tyus Bowser? I want to, I want to talk about him really quick because okay. obviously it was a very, very weird year last season. Um, didn't play at all. It was kind of like a mystery I word, right? We didn't really know what he was dealing with. Um, but right. it seems like now he's he's ready to go. Next season, he'll be ready to play. Are we at all interested in bringing him back into the fold and letting him do his thing at edge rusher? I don't think the Ravens are. Uh, you know, he, he could do anything for this defense when he was healthy. Drop back in the coverage, stop the run, get to the quarterback. It's just he hasn't played a game of football in how long. There has to be a ramp up period, um, and I don't know what the what it's looking like with him and the coaches because it felt like last year they'd ask Harbaugh, you know, what's going on with Ty Spouser, and then Harbaugh's like, well, ask him. It felt like there's a disconnect between the two, uh, which I don't, you know, really, it just makes you think he won't be back. Uh, and then I just want to bring up a comment real quick from Yolanda. She says Van Noy's price went up after Clowney's contract. Um, this time's a thousand. Clowney had nine and a half sacks last year in 17 games. Vanoy had nine in 14 games. So half sack less yeah. in three less, in three more than eight games. So uh, I know I, I would like for us to get Vanoy back, but he's probably looking to get the same or similar to what Clowney got. But going back to the Bowser, uh, I, I don't think he'll be back. I'd like for him to be back, but. Even if we had Bowser with this, these edge rushers, I'm still not comfortable. I still want somebody else because I, I can't trust That's fair. Them. That's fair. But see, my thing is, I mean, and you made a good point when you when you first started talking about Bowser. I mean, he can kind of do anything you need him to do, right? He can drop back yeah. in coverage. He can rush the quarterback. He can stop the run. It, it's it, We always talk about the NFL stands for the no feelings league, right? And I think that with a situation like this, I'm willing, and I would hope that the coaches and Eric DaCosta and, you know, the owner, whoever, are willing to put their pride to the side on this one because I feel like 
Tyus Bowser's the type of guy who has a lot of good football ahead of him. How, how old is Tyus Bowser? He can't be anything over, like, 28, right? 28. There we go. Right. He, he's I – think, I think it makes sense to bring him back. Um, that's just me because, again, a guy who can do it all. If you think that he was being disingenuous about being hurt last season, that's one thing. If you know that he was not hurt, I mean, you, can't, you can't tell a man that, hey, look, you're not hurt. You need to play. Obviously, he, might, he was dealing with something because – the season before that and the seasons before that, it looked like he loved to be out there. He was playing like a Raven. He was all over the place, right? He ended multiple games on his own, like, you know, final drives, final chances from these other teams. He was the one getting the big sack. He was the one forcing the fumble. He was the one doing this and that, right? So it's just like, I don't know. It makes sense for me. And I know a lot of people aren't in the same school of thought as me on this one, but yeah, would love to have Bowser back. And I think Yolanda agrees here. She says, but the damage between him and the Ravens is obvious it's just, I don't know, man. It's one of those things where I feel like you got to put pride to the side because I don't know who we're going to bring in who's going to yeah. kind of um, supplement that role in the way that Tyus Bowser was able to do when he was playing for us. Um, it's like the same thing. How do we feel about how do we feel about an Andrew Voorhees? He didn't play all season last season. I know he's basically like redshirted his rookie season, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's a good point there, and I just pulled up his stats. Tyus Bowser's last game for us was the wild card game against the Bengals. Had a okay. sack that game. Had a sack. Uh, but he did miss the first six to seven weeks of the 2022 season. So he only had two sacks in regular season, one in that playoff game. It's just, I guess, the availability as well. Uh, but his best season far and away, 2021, season from hell, had seven sacks, um, four passes deflected, and then two uh, fumble recoveries, and I don't want to go back even further, but you know, twenty twenty, uh, even then, uh, yeah, two sacks that year, but three picks. He he would get production from, you know, you, you don't know where you get it from with with Bowser, but you know where to get it. It's just, yeah, man, I don't know. But at the same time, I am with somebody who wanted Odell on the Ravens last year, so I can't be too much of a hypocrite because he didn't play a whole year. But just with Bowser, I think the thing holding me back is just the disconnects. I don't think there's trust. Uh, but if it was a, a vetman for the for him, why not? If he doesn't look good in preseason, you know what you can do. But it doesn't hurt to have it. Yeah, I mean, because literally at this point, we're we're banking on quite literally banking on either David Ajabo or Odafe Owe to take that next step. And we've been saying this for the past two to three seasons on these guys. <sighs> it's it's just. You know, like it's a tough division as is, right? I mean, Here now you've got now you've got a Russell Wilson and a Justin Fields on the way, right? Justin Fields is the one we really have to worry about, right? I mean, he is the quarterback of the future for the Steelers. You know, Russell Wilson's going to start to begin the season, and then at some point, I think we projected like week seven, week eight, they kind of change hands. Justin Fields takes over, and I think that they don't look back from there. That is a mobile quarterback. Deshaun Watson can move. Joe Burrow has very, very underrated escapability, right? All these guys that we're facing in this, con not conference, but division, are going to be able to get out of the pocket, are going to be able to, you know, break tackles, evade tacklers. It, we got to get guys who can get these kids on the ground. Like, that. that's really what it boils down to, you know? So just praying, literally praying at this point that either Ojabo or Owe can take that step up, and we just haven't seen it yet, so... That is going to be a position of weakness for us this season. I can I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right now. I don't I don't foresee like any moves, any uh combination of moves that the Ravens can possibly make to say to where you would end up saying that's a premier edge rushing group. You just can't. There's nothing we can do right now. Our hands are kind of tied. Um so we have to hope that one of these guys is going to be able to uh step up. Uh, let me see. Yeah. I too says we won the division and beat all the good teams. Uh, Russell Wilson does not make a difference. That's fair. I mean, it's fair to say. We'll see, right? But, I mean, literally at this point, every quarterback in the division is mobile to at least some degree, you yeah. know? So that's yeah. going to be big. It's going to yeah. be big, man. And that's why these other teams have these premier pass rushers like the TJ Watt and like the uh, the Miles Garrett. Uh, Darius Trey Smith. Is it Darius Smith? It's, there's, listen, man, there's names everywhere in this division rushing the passer. 
except yeah. for on the Ravens. So we're going to say Alex Highsmith to go along with TJ Watt. Yeah. Um, I love Highsmith. Yeah. I see Cali only says we got to be able to score points and not to veer off too far. Uh, some, mm-hmm. some stuff did happen rules wise to kind of, you know, bring up scoring points. And you made some great points. I thought, uh, you know, the rule changes, the hip drop tackle that is now, you know, banished illegal. And then the whole new kickoff return. Um, I'll start off with a kickoff return. I don't hate it. Uh, I like the way the XFL did it. I think it'll keep players safe. You don't have players running, you know, with a head start, just going to lay somebody out. And unfortunately, that's where a couple of I words happen where they, you know, guys really get severely knocked out. Ambulance has to come on the field. I'm cool with that. The whole hip drop tackle stuff. How do you want somebody to tackle? Yes, you know, the way that Andrews was tackled was a little weird, but if he tries to pull him down, Andrews is going to use his momentum and go into the, the end zone. Uh, and like you said, they're catering to the offense. I feel like it's hard enough to play defense now as it is. If you're defensive back to me, that's one of the hardest positions I think in sports. Cause you do, yeah. you touch somebody and they sell it the right way. It's a flag on you. You can do everything right. And if they sell it, it's a flag, but scoring was still down. Maybe just good defenses are, are, are playing. Or maybe there's just a lot of, mid quarterbacks in the league right now that but that that's how i feel about it you know you can give yours um but yeah, i'm not a big fan of the whole hip drop stuff yeah um let me address the hip drop thing first uh i made a short about it a couple of days ago but this is this is another one of those things that makes you realize how the nfl looks at both sides of the football they look at offense like superheroes they look at defenses like super villains, right? So anything to thwart the super villains, that's what they're going to do. And it's kind of obvious that's what they're doing here. I mean, the rules in the past, I think uh, Tom Brady had famously, uh, famously had a quote about it a couple years ago on a, on a radio show or podcast, something like that, where he was saying like, you know, it's the defense shouldn't feel so responsible, right? To like, you know, make sure that the, the safety of all these players is, is upheld because, at the end of the day, they have to compete, man. And you're telling the offense, go all out. Do anything you can to score points, right? We're even going to start, you know, the, the, the kickoff or the new kickoff rule is going to set you up with better field position, this and that. And now when you have this hip drop tackle rule, if you if you, if you you hip drop on somebody and, and try to bring them down, it's a 15-yard penalty plus an automatic first down. That is insane. That is insane, man. Uh, you, you just... I can't fathom how many times that is going to impact the game this season. And I said this on Twitter. Yep. It, it is going to be a very, very, very sober reality reality check when, when something like this happens in a, in, a, in a playoff game, let alone a Super yep. Bowl or a, 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 yep. a game that's, you know, in contention for uh, sending one team or another to the playoffs. It's going to rear its ugly head, and no one's going to like it. Everybody, I promise, everybody who, who likes this rule right now thinks it's great for the league. You're not going to like it in the long run. You're just not because it's going to impact your team multiple times this season. And I like what you said earlier about Mark Andrews when Logan Wilson made that tackle on him. And listen, we're, we're Ravens fans. If, if, you, if you don't know, we're Ravens fans, and we're telling you this. Like, we lost our, our star tight end for the season, right, in, in what, week 11 or something like that, or week 8? It was yep. like mid season. Week eleven. Week eleven. We lost our, our star tight end week eleven of the season, bro. And and just I'm we're still telling you the hip drop rule is is completely asinine. It it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, because you're basically saying like if you are parallel, if you're running parallel or you're even slightly behind a ball carrier, just forget about trying to tackle him. You're already beat. You are already beat. There's nothing you can do. You can't grab them high because that's a horse collar. You can't go too low, right? Because that's whatever they want to call that these days. You 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 can't even really you can't even really get that low to trip guys up anymore. Guys are so good at like high stepping out of that. To be honest with you, so the only thing left is grabbing them by the hips and trying to swing them down some way. And especially yep. if they're that close to the end zone, like you said, if you try to like grab them from behind and like you know try to grab like the the torso or something like the pads it's not gonna work these guys are big they're strong they're fast that momentum is going to carry them right into the end zone and i said this on twitter as well tight ends are going to absolutely have a 
field day with this rule. Because listen, if you're a tight end, on average, you weigh a good, you know, 40 or 50 pounds heavier than the DBs in the secondary trying to track, uh, trying to track you down. Uh, those guys are not going to be able to make tackles on a Travis Kelsey when he gets a full head of steam, on a Mark Andrews, you know what I mean? On a on a on a uh, a Sam Laporta, Sam Laporta. Right there. On what I think Brock Bowers when he gets in this league, I think Brock Bowers is going to be very good. Uh, guys all over, you know what I mean? Tight ends all over the league are it's just they're going to feast off of this rule. So um, I know tight ends right now are licking their chops. Let me see. Love West brings up a point here. Yeah, Derrick Henry for two thousand yards. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. not wrong. You're not wrong because once he gets into that secondary, once he gets to that second level, Alex, you know it. You've seen it. I've seen it. Everybody watching this show right now has seen what happens when Derrick Henry gets to that second level. Those DBs cannot tackle him. They cannot bring him down unless they grab him by the hips and use their weight as leverage. Right? Use their dead weight as leverage to bring him down. My girl Cal says something very important here. Sports mm. are always dangerous. Talk about it. Cheerleaders have the highest rates of concussions, but they're not stopping people from being flyers. Might as well make it flag football at this point. It, she hit the nail on the great head. Point. Thank you, Cal. I that's appreciate a fantastic you. Point. Love you. That's a fantastic it, point. It's a great point because it's just, and it literally goes to show you, the NFL only cares about their bottom line. It's all about the money. The points put up on the board put butts in seats, and it gets eyes glued yep. to the TV. And with these deals with Amazon and Peacock and whoever else they're going to be selling their oh, rights to the, to the games to. I hate that. They need points to be scored. They need games to be exciting. They do not want another shit show array of Thursday night football games for another season. They can't afford it. They quite literally can't afford it. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. It's mind-blowing. Go ahead, though. My bad. So I'll have a couple of points. I have full... I disagree with you on, on all of that right there. You bringing up the whole hip drop. What is one of the few things, you don't have to answer it, I'll answer for you, that almost every player hates? Turf fields. Turf fields. We're going to ban a tackle. How many ACLs has a turf field taken in the past couple of years? Mm, it's claimed a lot of ACLs. You you send teams to London to play at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, where they basically roll turf on a on 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 concrete on, on cement. The players even said it like it, it's like just, it's basically playing football on a carpet, you know, without the bat. Like you, it's you hit the ground, it's gonna be you're gonna feel that 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 cement under there. And the Thursday night games. It's almost like if you give teams four days rest, their product's not going to be good. I don't know what has gone wrong with the whole Thursday night because they never used to be this bad. Or maybe they were this bad. And maybe I just was just like kind of, you know, I, I don't even know about it. But the, the Thursday night product has been awful. I can't even name maybe two or three good games last year Thursday. I know the Cowboys Seahawks was a good one. Um, there were what other ones good. were really that good? Yeah, the, I, I can't but remember the like exact most ones, of the time but they were towards was... the later half of the season. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yes, that is true. But even like the uh, the whole the Black Friday game, the, the mm. Jets and the Dolphins, awful. Yeah. And you bring up Peacock. There was one exclusive Peacock game on the playoffs last year, the Chiefs and the Dolphins, twenty six to seven. That game was over at a certain time. Uh, just say yeah. probably by halftime. We knew, like you knew, the Dolphins weren't winning. And boss, yeah, yeah. Raiders blunt the Chargers. Yeah, what was that? Seventy something or like no, it's fifty five points. I think it's awful. So it's like they're, they're caring about the wrong things. And th this whole hip drop tackle, man. I just, how do you want them to tackle somebody now? Touch them. Yeah, yeah. it's it's. It doesn't make any sense. Now, I, I love what Love West said. I hadn't even thought about Derrick Henry in this. I was just so mind blown by the NFL making this rule. But that that is one way it will, I can say, it's going to benefit the Ravens. You know, like if he can get, again, to that second level, DBs are going to have a very hard time bringing him down. Because now, as a defender, you have to legit think about how you're going to execute a tackle before you execute the tackle. And if you think one second too late, one second too long, 
the guy is gone. He's going to burn you. These guys are professionals, man. They are going to feast off of this rule. You're going to see more points because of it. And when it comes to the kickoff rule, I'm actually kind of a fan of the kickoff rule. I'm with you on that one. If it means less touchbacks and just less pointless plays, like, you know, on the kickoffs where they just boot it out the back of the end zone, sure. And I think it makes sense from a uh, from a consumer standpoint for, for the casual consumer as well because you think about it, kickoffs are something that happen when? Right out of a commercial break, right? So if I'm a casual fan and I'm just like, you know, walking by the living room and watching my roommate watch football really quick and just, oh, it's coming off the commercial. Let me see what happens first here. Would I rather see a touchback? Or would I rather see a more compelling play where you got 10 on 10 guys who are five yards apart and they just slam into each other, right? And then you got another guy yep. trying to break through that wall and run for a touchdown. That's pretty damn exciting. I'm not going to lie. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I do think that I think about Devin Hester a lot um, in the in these types of uh, situations where these rules are kind of tweaked because Devin Hester is the goat of kick returning. I, I grew up watching that guy return kicks. It, man, he, he would feast off of this rule. I, I'll say that. Mm-hmm. But, I, but I think, and I, and I said this in the, uh, I said this in the short, with it being basically like a 10 on 10, or I think it's like a nine on 10, something like that, five yards apart, the guys can't move at all until the ball carrier actually catches the ball or until it hits the ground in the, in the, uh, in the safe area or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, that is going to be very interesting because you had, you used to have to be able to get through waves of guys. Now it's just, you get through one line and you might break, you yep. might be home free. You might be home free. So yep. I think that special teams coordinators and I'm looking at John Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, he better have something cooked up for this one because look, this is your wheelhouse, right? This is your claim to fame. This is how you came up through the ranks in this league special team. So I want to see some creative stuff. I want to see some 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 fancy some fancy blocking schemes something. I want to see something, you know. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see. But at the end of the day, I do like the uh, I do like the um, the new rule. Callie says Harbs ain't got shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, you gotta give probably more right. faith in my boy. Uh, put some more faith in Harbs. Man. True. Come on. Yeah, and then uh, one more thing I want to bring about the whole hip drop. You'll see it. I think. One of the first two or three weeks, there's going to be a drive, potentially a game-winning drive. Third down, third and long. They throw it to somebody, hip drop, first down. That's going to ultimately lead to a game-winning field goal or touchdown. Then you hear about it all next day on the Monday shows, your your Fox uh, Sports, your, your Stephen A's, Shannon Sharp talking about it, your Colin Coward talking about it, your Nick Wright talking about it. You're going to hear about it, and then even on the post-game show, on the CBS with, with Boomer, with JB, with Nate, with J.J. Watt, with all of them, you're going to hear them talking about it because it's going to happen very early in the season. And it's going to be a debate the whole year, and it's going to be just one of the new talking points of the NFL. And I'm not looking forward to hearing about that and talking about it either. And DG, it'll be against the Ravens too. It'll be, yeah, Kyle Hamilton, perfectly clean tackle, throw the flag. It's going to – I hope we don't – have to be in a in a game defending drive uh but that's some that's some stuff that would happen to us it feels like yeah and it's just it's just it's so unfortunate because I, I think what we're going to realize here with this new rule being put in place by the way shout out to all 70 people watching live right now uh thank you guys for tuning into this episode of the Propane brain podcast make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel um but back to what i was saying i think that the most unfortunate thing about this and what a lot of people are going to realize once the season really gets going. These guys, these defenders, right? So whether that be linebackers, DBs, you know, the main guys who are bringing down um, guys out in space. The types of angles that these guys have to take to get to the ball carrier sometimes, sometimes it literally requires a hip drop of some sort, of some sort. And like, I, I don't even want the word the term hip drop to become like taboo like it, it's a, it's legitimately a bad thing because it's not it's not we're getting away from what football originally was i mean and i know that they've been trying to clean up the sport for the past couple of decades get the the huge nasty hits out of it of course get rid of all the stuff to the head because that's legitimately going to impact somebody's future like yes legit and not to say I that you know say, oh. the exactly um not to say that the lower extremities aren't important either, but it's it's just 
it's just man, you have to realize that football is a dangerous sport. You are never going to make football a safe sport to play. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. There's too much weight. There's too much speed. I mean, when you have all these athletes, 22 athletes on the field at one time, all running into each other, crashing into each other for 60 minutes, that someone's going to get hurt. I'm sorry, Roger Goodell, but it's going to happen. It is inevitable. Okay. So I just don't really see this whole hip drop and the whole, the, the new initiative of the uh, the NFL to kind of promote safety as, as a more salubrious option than, than, than what we've been used to. I just don't. Like DG says, it's a brutal sport. You cannot avoid the injuries. Uh, the I always, damn, I said that, it. I said it. Damn. Uh, uh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, we're not in season right now. So I, I think I yeah. think I'll be good. Uh, but yeah, you're yeah, good. You're going to repent you're for good. that. We're good. No, no training camp. No mini camp. We're good. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then um, <laughs> one more thing I do want to bring up. Boz he talked about it. Where is it at? He said. Oh, we're having a World Cup final on the on effing turf, the most expensive legs in the world. It's all about money. Um, yeah, yeah. And Boz, I hate you for that profile picture. Um, I will come to your house and I will kick your door down and I will rob you. But <laughs> yeah. even this, like, there is a reason why certain players in the MLS will not play on turf fields because they just don't mm. trust it. And I hope that they, you know, they they come to an agreement where there will be grass for the World Cup final because. This doesn't happen often having the World Cup in our country, so they got to get this fixed as well. It's just there's so many other bigger issues, and they're talking about some tackle that what one person got hurt on. Anybody can get hurt on on any tackle. You can get hurt. We've seen people get hurt celebrating sacks. That's just how the sport is. So I mean, bro, who who was who was it we saw get hurt in the Super Bowl, literally running off the sideline? Dre Greenlaw. Dre Greenlaw. Yeah. Right. Perfect example. Like, come on, man. Goodell, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Like, this is football. It, it's... <sighs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick, you, you brought up the World Cup, and I think I remember you telling me a while back that the next World Cup would be in the U.S. of A., but what uh, state exactly is it going to be in? So there's a whole bunch of host cities. Um, Baltimore and D.C. had a joint bid. Uh, was not picked, you know. Damn. Baltimore versus everybody. Uh, D- DMV versus everybody. Uh, I know I know that debate, but For basically, sure. yeah. Uh, yeah. The closest one to us would be Philly, I believe. They're having it at Lincoln Finance. Of course, they're having it in Philly. I mean, why, why not have it there? You know, it's where Mr. Perfect <laughs> plays. Um, but that's, uh, that's one of them. They're going to have uh, MetLife. And then I believe... I don't know if the Panther Stadium is one of them as well in Carolina. I know Miami has one, Kansas City, Cowboys, the Rams, Seattle, um, and then Canada and Mexico have a couple of games as well. But there, there will be be your you know your round of no your uh, group stage games. So there'll be a ton yeah. of them. Then you you know you get into the round of sixteen, yeah. in quarters, semis. And then the final is going to be in MetLife, which I thought it should have been in Dallas because I think that's the best stadium in the country, but didn't didn't work out. Yeah, I mean, either way, I'm excited to sell for the World Cup to come back. What what year is that again? 2026. But this summer, okay. we had the Euros in Germany, so that's kind of a good way to kick it off. And then actually, the Copa America as well. USA is in that against uh, some some South uh, American teams, so it's going to be a Good summer, full of, of footy, uh, but twenty twenty six will be it'll be fun because USA just had a big win over Mexico too. USA soccer is looking oh, good. Wow, nice, nice. Who do I need? To, who do I need to look out for on USA soccer? Obviously Pulisic, um, but Gio Reyna, he is on loan at Nottingham Forest from Borussia Dortmund. He had he had two assists in the game against Jamaica where we should have lost. And had a goal mm-hmm. in the final. Um, this guy actually had beef with the USA men's head coach, Greg Berhalter. He was barely playing in the World Cup, and now it was a whole big story. But Gio Reyna is a What's that name again? I'm uh, sorry. Gio Reyna. R E Y N A. Got it. Yeah, I'm going to keep Pulisic, that name in my little uh, book here for sure. Yeah, I'm familiar yeah, with Our midfield's good. Nice. 
And then um, our goalkeeper actually used to play for my favorite team, Matt Turner. Um, he's he's iffy. But yeah, Pulisic and, and Reyna, those are the two guys who I think. And then obviously, midfield is good, McKenna and Adams. Yeah. 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 yeah but stop bringing him up. I, I, I don't want to see this picture. I, I, I don't want to keep on seeing this. <laughs> Free uh, yeah, yeah. Mod Boz, the Steelers fan. Uh, they got Patrick Queen, man. It still stings. It still stings, to be honest. So too soon, boss. Too soon. But but yeah, I'm I'm excited for the World Cup. It's it's one of my favorite sports spectacles, uh, period. Like it's just there's something about it, man. I mean, I, I think I first started watching it uh heavily and I think the last one was twenty fourteen. Is that sound about right? Yep. Yeah, twenty fourteen. I, I can just remember going to the National Harbor. Uh, not the one out in Baltimore, but the one in um in Oxon Hill near the MGM, and that was just they had the they had it. It was live. I can't remember who they were playing. It might have been Portugal, somebody else in, in group play, but it was live. They had it on that big screen out there. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, energy is just crazy, man. So I, I'm excited for next summer, man. We we got to make something happen. I don't care if we got to go to Philly for it. I'm down. Yeah, and. For me, like the World Cup, is feels like one of the few times the country's fully united, and it's not like it is. It is, it is. Like, it, yeah. So, it feels like we're only united during when something bad happens. But like yeah. last winter, when the World Cup was one, we kind I I felt united with a bunch of people. You know, when the USA was playing, before she got knocked out by Belgium, who's a really fucking good team. They're like ranked number four in the world. But mm. anything can happen. It's in your backyard. You can go all the way. Like. I'm not expecting us to win it, but I'm expecting us to make a deep run because we do have a solid squad and you're going to have the home support. You got to do something. I agree. I agree. Okay, so let's go ahead and change gears here. Let's get into uh, the last two topics we have. First being J.K. Dobbins visiting yes. the L.A. Chargers. Uh, of course, home of now um, Gus Edwards, right? And Greg Roman. So uh, how fitting would that be for Greg Roman to go and get you know, those two running backs that he, that he had uh, before in his backfield. That would be very interesting to me. I don't think that we're bringing J.K. Dobbins back. I think that he is a goner, um, as unfortunate as that, as that is to say. But what say you about one J.K. Dobbins in this visit with the Chargers? It's weird because this is the same J.K. Dobbins who was talking about, I want to get 20 carries a game. They aren't using me after the playoff game last year. Now, I get, you know... You're doing your due diligence. You're going to go and visit. But if he were to go there, it's like you're not going to be the league guy. You're going to be splitting carries with Gus. It's going to be the Ravens all over again. And I doubt you'll see 20 carries a game. So I'm rooting for him. I, I love JK as a player and as a human. I think he he just has an infectious personality. He seems like he's just a fun, fun person to be around. And when he was playing, he was a joy to watch. But... I, I just doesn't make sense. And I saw a report that uh, Zeke and Dalvin Cook are looking at the Cowboys. Right now, I think, you know, JK, I'm taking JK over Zeke Oh, after last year. I mean, if, if JK can stay healthy, he's better than both of those guys right now. It's just the whole health factor. So yeah. I want to see him go somewhere where he'd be a number one. I just, I, it just doesn't make sense for him to go to the, to, to the Chargers. Yeah. I mean, the guy, I think J.K. Dobbins, what well, he averages, what, 5.3 yards a carry for his career? Something crazy like that. But, again, the whole thing with him, the availability just has not been there in large part over the past couple of seasons. And that's something that, you know, if you're going to be a running back, people are already kind of devaluing the running back position. So if you're a young running back who cannot stay on the field, that is not a good look for any team. And like you said, it's not going to lead to you getting – that for, that lead back position it's just it's just not so i think it's another one of those situations where kind of like i want to say kind of similar to the Tyus bowser situation but not at not entirely the same because i mean we all watch jk dobbins score that touchdown against the jets week one and then have that devastating i word where he you know didn't come back for the rest of the season the Tyus Bowser one was kind of a little bit more of a mystery, right? We never really knew all the way what was going on. The coaches were acting all weird about it and whatnot. But I just think that where it's similar is that the trust just isn't there. You know, I don't think that the Ravens are going to pony up um, any sort of contract for a guy who did not give them a legit return on their investment uh, with the draft pick that they took him with. So 
Good luck to JK. Again, I don't think we bring him back. I think that's one of the main reasons why we brought in a Derrick Henry and we're going to uh, utilize him and especially until Keaton Mitchell gets back and then we'll start working both of those guys in there. But I think that the Ravens, the way that the Ravens are thinking right now, they're, they're thinking between Keaton Mitchell and JK Dobbins, uh, one I word is better than two to three I words and this guy's younger. So I think that's where they're going with it. But let's go ahead and transition to our next topic here. So this was something that was kind of talked about today uh, as like satires, joke, right? All day long. Lamar Jackson kind of getting old, right? Let's let's just let's just cut to the chase. Lamar Jackson is 27 years old, going into his seventh season in the NFL, and no rings. Okay, no rings. That's that's what it is. That's, that's what it is, right? I like that. That's crazy. It's kind it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Um, especially with the success he's been able to get, <laughs> people might be looking at me sideways right now. Uh, but especially with the success he's been able to, um, you know, acquire over the over, especially the regular seasons, he's got two MVPs. One of them, one of those unanimous. He's got multiple playoff appearances, although he still does have a playoff record under five hundred. Uh, we got to kind of see where we're going with this one. And I made a short earlier today, and I was saying like the big. <sighs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. 50-year-old, or 55, no, that's that's more like a 65-year-old Lamar Jackson there. If he was able to grow a beard that long, I don't think his beard will ever grow that long. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, but I think I think it's true, though. He's getting old. He was joking about it on Twitter a lot today with a lot of different people, teammates and the like. Um, I thought it was fun, but it did get me thinking, like, you know, we're never going to get back that Lamar Jackson that hit that spin move on the Bengals and took it to the house. We're Stop. never getting a Stop. play like that. We're not. I'm just saying. We're not getting a play like that ever again out of Lamar Jackson. It, it might hurt to hear that, but it is the honest truth. We're not getting that sort of um thing out of him. You know, once I saw him and Legereus Sneed, I think it was, kind of running step for step in that, in that AFC Championship game. You remember when he took the handoff and he kind of had the open lane, but it just didn't seem like yeah. he was fast enough to really turn the burners on him and to at least get another 15, 20 yards before he was tracked down. You know, I get it. DBs are, are faster guys too, and that's why people put up people tend to put more DBs on the field. Um, shout out to that Chargers game from 2018. But it's uh hey, hey, calm down. But it's it's uh it's 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 feeling it's feeling kind of hmm, scary a little bit to me that we're getting to this point in Lamar oh, Jackson's yes. career and we still have not really seen I don't want to say him take that next step, but we haven't seen a Super Bowl. We haven't seen a Super Bowl appearance. Now we did just make the AFC Championship game, but this year is going to be big. This year is going to be big because I don't think that going into year eight and having you know, if we, let's say we don't make the championship, we don't make the conference championship game again this year, you only have one conference championship appearance, right? No wins, no Super Bowl appearances in eight years. Does this not? And his contract's only going to get bigger and bigger, and he's getting older. So, Alex, I want to get your takes on this. I want to I want to know what you're thinking about Lamar Jackson and his career trajectory. Now, I feel very old. Damn. Uh, that that kind of that. That's led me down a, a severe path of just pain right there. Just thinking about it. Just we've talked about this too many times about the rookie year and the year after that. And like what we've been doing and how life changed. And, yeah, year seven for Lamar. Uh, not bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, young Lamar in 2018 getting drafted. And the hunger, I think, has never left him. I I I'll tell you that. Um, the good thing about him is that he doesn't need to have the speed. He has the moves. He has the uh, – what he's learned a lot is taking the right paths, taking the right angles. That's something that I think he's just gotten so much better at. But – it is definitely concerning, and BP, thank you for this. He brings it up. Michael Crabtree, John Brown, Seth Roberts, Sammy Watkins, Des Bryant, Deshaun Jackson, DeMarcus Robinson, Laquan Treadwell. Underwhelming wide receiver free agents in the Lamar Jackson era, not his fault. Um, yes and no. I still, I mean, for for years prior, yeah, uh, last year in the AFC Championship game, there were some plays, you know, you can't get back, just some, some errant throws, uh, but 
it's just at the same time like that we weren't running. You know, it's there's so much blame to go around. Um, but and then B, and DG says that Lamar should not have to break two dudes in the back for every two to three plays, and that that's true too. Uh, he's had to bear and um just have so much pressure and so much responsibility for a quarterback and offense that you don't see for anybody else. And Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, I remember they're talking about it vividly on our uh, Christmas game. He was coming out. They're like, this guy has so many responsibilities, and he means so much to this offense more than any other quarterback in the league. And I will stand on that more than the Golden Boy Mahomes. Like he, Lamar did this offense means so much more to what Mahomes means to the Chiefs. And just because how much responsibility he has, like, and that might be crazy to say, but I'm not trying to discount who's better than the other, but I'm just saying, like, how much Lamar means to us. Like, look what happened when Tyler Huntley came in. What happened in 2021? Yeah. It's awful. Everything did that fall shit was apart. fucking awful. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, like, I'm not trying to discount from Mahomes either. And he, he's right now greatest of, you know, this era. You know, Brady before yeah. now, this new era, it's him, obviously. I'm not trying to discount it, but like, it's how much Lamar means, like how much, you know, like you bring another quarterback in here. We we're thinking, we we're talking about last year. We had Derek Carr rumors, Jimmy Garoppolo rumors, fuck Stetson Bennett rumors to the Ravens. Yeah. Let's go back. Let's say Lamar does not come by Raven. We have fucking Stetson Bennett. W- what wide receiver? Odell was signed. Uh, who knows if we draft Zay Flowers. We might draft a, a quarterback in round one, so Zay Flowers might not even be a Raven. So if we're going off of that, it would be Bateman, Duvernay, Odell. With what? A <sighs> and that right there to me is a five to six win team. The offense yeah, would be treacherous. I, you bring up a solid point, bro. You bring up a very solid point there. Okay, maybe not five to six. Uh, we got... Maybe like eight to nine. <laughs> maybe eight to nine, but defense is still <laughs> amazing. But. Oh, yeah, defense will still ball out. So I'd say, yeah, probably like, especially since there's an extra game now, somewhere between seven and nine, seven and nine wins, I would say. Like later Flacco years, like pushing to get in a wild card spot, like week 17, week, eight, week 18. This has to happen and this has to happen. And we have to win to get into the playoffs. I remember those days. Those were very, very painful times. Okay. Um, look, we do have a super chat donation. This one's coming from Mystic Max himself. Max off it. Dropping the five piece in the chat. Thank you, bro. It says Lamar will not have he will have not one but two Super Bowl rings with the Ravens when it's all said and done. Believe that. Hey man. I hope so. Right, Kodak Black Voice. I hope so. I really do. Uh, because like I said, going into year seven, he's only gonna get older and the running is only gonna get less and less effective, you know. Um, so that's why, yeah, it, it, they did do him a, a very large disservice in not getting him a premier star wide receiver to kind of, how do you say, right his wrongs and really uh, cover up some of his ailments when throwing the ball, especially younger in his career. Um, they 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 didn't do they didn't do uh, they didn't do him good on that one. I, I'll say that. But I, again, Max, I, I really do hope you're right here. I hope that we do. Kind of yeah. get over that hump next season. I think we got over the hump this season, to be honest with you. I mean, we won the playoff game, yeah. got to the conference championship game, and we were right there. I mean, we were eight points away from getting to a Super Bowl. Uh, so, what, what say you, bro? I'll tell you this even more about the whole winning the playoff game. We won comfortably. The one in 2020 against the Titans, that wasn't comfortable at all. No. That to me, like, I was nervous that even that final drive. I thought Tannehill was about to pull some stuff out of his back pocket, drive down there. They tie it up. Then we go into overtime with them having all the momentum. And yeah. But no, defense stepped up. Marcus Peters got that pick. Like this one against the Texans, it just. Very convincing. We tied at half. But yeah, in the second half, we just ran them out, out the stadium. And yeah. even the Chiefs game, much uh, unlike the, the, the Titans game we lost in 19, we were in it the whole time. We just kept. Pulling a plastic burst and shooting ourselves in the leg. And then the Bills game, like, can I really even count that when Lamar goes down and and the greatest kicker of all time has arguably his worst game of his career? Not going to make excuses here, but that just wasn't a good game at all all, on all three phases. So it was windy. I I think we got over a small hump. The next hump is just getting to the playoffs and get, I mean, getting to the Super Bowl. And we have guys, they'll get, they'll be more mature, Zay Flowers, because. If he doesn't die for that, if he doesn't get a penalty, who knows what happens. But it's valuable experience that you don't teach. <laughs> so 
Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, you know, I you you bring you bring up the Zay Flowers fumble. I I really got to go back and rewatch that AFC Championship game, and I know it's going to pain me. I know it will, but I, I it's hard. But I got to see how we march down the field on that drive. You know, I want to see what Lamar Jackson and that offense was doing. I know there was the big throw to Flowers where he got the penalty. But outside of that, I want to see I want to see what the play calling was like. I want to go back and look at that and see who was really stepping up. Uh, because that was that was that was supposed to be the turning point in that game. And if we go down there and score those points, whether it be three or seven, like we were supposed to do, that keeps momentum on our side, knowing that our defense was pitching a shutout in the second half. Man. So isn't it crazy when you think about it? I put How put up the play by play. First and ten at Baltimore thirty six. Uh the drive before. Uh, it was a three and out on the Chiefs. We stopped them. We get the ball at 36. Lamar Jackson deep passes a Flowers for 54 yards. That was the first play of the drive. Wow. Next play, a uh, pass to complete short left to Justice Hill. Second and 10, uh, Lamar to Zay, 14 yards. First and 10, Lamar to Bate, two yards. Second and eight, Lamar Jackson pass short to Zay Flowers for eight yards, fumbles. And that see... Drew- was all Zay. That was his third catch of the drive. He's like, you know what? Got to put the team on my back. <laughs> pull the pull the Greg Jennings and Madden. Put the team on his back, and he tried to, and just didn't didn't, didn't work. And how were the uh, what? How much time was left on this drive in the game? That was the fu- that was the first play of the fourth quarter. The first play of the fourth quarter is when the fumble occurred. Fifteen minutes to play, a whole quarter. It ain't the first forty-eight. My thing is, when you're when you're pushing down the field like that, why not switch it up? Why not run the football? Why not put the ball in Lamar Jackson's hands? Be the dynamic offense that we know the Ravens can be. You know, like why are we throwing the rest? Todd Munkin, I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. Why are we? Man. So I, I really got to go back and watch it now since I know you just told me the play-by-play on it, but I got to go back and watch it. It's going to make me mad, but it, it it still baffles me how we completely just, again, capitulated our entire identity in that fourth quarter, especially it's just in the second half in general. You know what I mean? Like, we, we just gave it up. Like, we all throws. It, oh, man. Goes back to Harv, so, says uh, Boz. When, yeah, when Boz, right. you know, that's the worst part. When your rival fans know the issue – like that's how you know it's a problem. And I'm going to go back to this. It's second and eight in the red zone. If that's a regular season game, we're running it. Gus up yeah. the middle for at least four yards. And, and that's why not. Right. <laughs> that's the craziest part. That's, <laughs> you know, like this man scored 13 Bro. touchdowns from basically from like less than five yards. All right. You're in the red zone. Second and eight, give him the ball, let him get it to third and short. And, and the whole, the whole playbook's open. You know you're going to have two downs. You have two downs to score because you know it's four-down territory. You're not kicking a field goal there. Yolanda says, how many targets did and- Cook get that AFC game? I'll wait. None. Oh, yeah. I about to say, you're going to be waiting a long time, right? Because, man, it's oh, – man. Mm, the pain just came back in droves. It, it really did. And uh, if there yeah. is one drive you should watch is a drive after that. Uh, 12 plays, 74 yards, ended in the interception that uh, he threw going for likely in triple coverage. That was a good one. I remember Aguilar had a really good play up the sideline. Nice catch and run, and I thought we were building something there. Yeah. wasn't meant to be. Uh, I mean, you guys are speaking facts in the chat, too. Even if Zay didn't get in, he would have had that first down. You're absolutely right about that. Could have punched it in. We've been doing all season. Uh, again, it was the first drive of the fourth quarter, man. That's what really gets me. I could see if there was like six minutes left or something like that. I get it. But no, stick to your guns throughout. Like, don't go away from uh, what you're known for. Let me see. Signing Cook to not use him irritates me. Me too, Dre. It it still irritates me. Uh, let me see. DG says, terrible decision making at every level except on defense. They were playing championship level football in the second half. Yeah, I mean, pitch the shutout, man. They scored zero points. A goose egg. In the second half, that's unheard of when you're pay- when you're playing the Chiefs, man. It's especially in the playoffs. Come on now, this is ridiculous. Okay, 
All right. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and leave it there, guys, for this episode of the Purple Rain Podcast as we are about an hour in. Go ahead and leave your comments, questions, and any concerns you may have, especially your questions, though. Leave those down below in the comments section. We will get to those. Uh, now, listen. Listen, draft is coming up. And I see we got our we got our guy in Graven in the house. And Graven, we got to get you back on the show, man. We got to get you back on the show. We, we, we do. We got to do something. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Um, but, yeah, draft is coming up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I can't get enough of it. I can't get I'm sorry. I Bro. love the meat. <laughs> when Lamar is active on Twitter, it's the best day. It is. It is. I'm not he gonna is lie. the I'm not gonna lie. Has there ever been a superstar so funny? Like I'm, I'm, I'm as an as a so, not gonna be biased at all. Real, you know, connecting with a he's fans. talking about he misses grade school. I missed the field days in elementary school, mm-hmm. running around, not a care in the world, playing any sport you wanted to for a whole day. You're damn right yeah. I miss it. Yeah. Man, it, I mean, you're right. I mean, Lamar Jackson, he's he's literally – he's probably the most candid, the most authentic, the most real uh, quarterback, professional quarterback on Twitter. I mean, I don't, I don't see any other quarterbacks kind of tweeting the way he does. You know, just like he's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. I think that's why we love our quarterback the most, man. Um, so shout out to him. He is getting old. In year seven. You know I'm, saying? Um, I'm not, not backtracking on that. Jackson. Unk Jackson, for sure. For sure. Um. But, but yeah, y'all, I mean, so, <laughs> again, we're going to go ahead and leave it there. We're having our draft episode next week, so make sure you stay tuned in for that. We're going to get a special guest on, hopefully. He, you know, he can come through. He's got a busy schedule, but hopefully he can come through. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to have a guest on for their draft episode, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel as well. If you are new to our channel, we'd appreciate that. Listen, we got content coming all off season long, whether it be these lives, whether it be the shorts. Tune in to the Purple Rain Podcast YouTube channel. My guy Alex rocking the O's hat there. They just had the, what, 11-3 victory yesterday, starting yeah. off strong. So go O's, man. Uh, but, yeah, love you guys. Make sure you like the video. With that being said, I'm going to let my guy Alex take us out. Thank you for coming through episode 233 of the Purple Rain Podcast. Appreciate you all. Cannot thank you all enough. And as always, stay positive, test negative. Yeah, and never, ever, ever, ever forget, even on the rainiest of days, to call God. It's been episode 233 of the Purple Rain Podcast. We're going to catch you guys in the next one.